Yo, what's up? I'm Defied and welcome to the fifth and almost final video in the Dota 2 itemization series. This time we are going through one of the newer mechanics in Dota and that is the neutral items which were introduced in patch 7.23 and came out near the end of November 2019. Similar to the other videos, I'll go through each of the neutral items tier by tier, explain what they do, how they work and when they might be useful. Before that though, we'll briefly take a look at what neutral items actually are and the mechanics behind them. Being one of the newer mechanics introduced to Dota, some players still don't fully grasp the importance of neutral items and how in the early game they give your character a subtle boost while in the late game they are extremely powerful. Anyway, neutral items differ from the standard items in Dota because you can't actually buy them. Rather, they are randomly dropped by neutral creeps after they have been killed, hence the term neutral items. These neutral items come in five different tiers and each tier can only be dropped after a specific time in the game has been reached. Currently, tier 1 starts dropping from minute 7, tier 2 at 15 minutes, tier 3 from 25 minutes, tier 4 at 40 minutes, and finally, the most powerful items, tier 5 at 60 minutes. Keep in mind though that these times may change in the future, but that won't make a difference to the content in this video. If they have changed, you can check when they drop by looking at the neutral items tab and looking at the time that they drop. Alright, so when the game timer reaches the specified time for tier 1 neutral items, killing neutral creeps will begin to give you a chance that they will drop a neutral item. Once they drop, they make a really dramatic sound and you can then scramble to pick the item up. The neutral creep will only drop an item if you are nearby and will not drop if there is also an enemy near the neutral creep as well. Now because these items are fully shareable, the drops can be collected by anyone on your team or the enemy team. If an enemy steals your item, you may never get it back, so be sure to grab it quickly. Once you have picked up a neutral item, it will appear in your neutral item slot, and its effects will become active like any other item. If you pick up a second neutral item however, you will not be able to use its effects as you can only have one at a time. If you want to swap to the newer item you picked up, you can do this and then you can send the item you don't want to the neutral stash or give it to another teammate. Now the neutral stash is basically where you can see all of the items your team has gotten from neutral drops so far. It shows you what items you've got for each tier, who has the item, or it will give it a special status based on where it is or what might have happened to it. If an item is available, it will appear coloured and no status is shown. If another player has it, it will have an equipped status and show the hero who has it equipped. If it's on a courier, then it will have the courier status and will show the hero whose courier has it. Maybe you've got two items and one of them is in your backpack, then the item will read backpack and show the hero who has it. Similarly, if it is in someone's stash, it will have a stash status and show the hero whose stash it's in. Some items can be consumed and in these cases the status will read consumed, and the last status is called unknown, and this may occur if the item is dropped on the ground or stolen by the enemy. Now while there are many items available in each tier, only a maximum of 4 for each team will drop for any tier. Once you have 4 in that tier, no more drops for that tier will occur, and because the drops are random, sometimes you'll get really good items, and other times, maybe not. But that's not to say they aren't useful, as some items appeal more to different heroes or roles. Also, you can't get duplicate items, as each drop will be unique. However, there is a chance you can get two of the same item on one team, if you manage to steal it from the enemy. Cool, well, now that the mechanics are done and you're one step closer to knowing everything about the neutral items, let's get started with the actual items, shall we? Alright, let's start with tier 1 items. These are the first tier of items that will drop in a game and probably the ones you'll be most familiar with. First up, we have the Arcane Ring. You can almost imagine what this one does just by looking at it, but basically, it's a weaker version of the Arcane Boots. It gives you a small boost to your intelligence, armor, and can be activated to restore 75 mana to yourself and nearby allies. Decent on intelligence heroes as it gives you 10 damage as well, but it can be used for most heroes as an early sustain item. Next up is the Broom Handle. Why a neutral is carrying a Broom Handle around I have no idea, but anyway this one works on melee heroes as it boosts their attack range slightly, but also gives some extra attack damage and bonus armor. Not really much more to this one, but it's good for melee carries to help them increase their farming rate in the early game. Now the Faded Brooch is one of my favourite tier 1 items, and that is because of the small movement speed bonus it gives. Movement is incredibly important in the game, and having a small edge early can really help with getting around the map and setting up ganks, thus making this item best on heroes that want to set up ganks like Earthshaker. 
Aside from the move speed bonus, this item also gives you an extra 200 to your mana pool, which is nice as it's basically an extra spell or two worth of mana. Now if you've played Dota for a while, then you probably recognise the Iron Talon. The Iron Talon used to be a purchasable item in Dota, which was an upgrade to the Quelling Blade. It was taken out a while ago, but it has been reintroduced as a neutral item. This one gives you the ability to cut down trees, but it can also be used on creeps to remove half of its current health, usually boosting your farm slightly. It also gives you a small boost to both your attack speed and armor, and is best on carry heroes who want to farm the jungle. Next up is the Ironwood Tree, which I like to call the GG Tree Maker. The Ironwood Tree has an activatable ability which allows you to plant a tree in the ground which says GG on it, hence the term GG Tree Maker. This is actually a pretty decent item and is sort of like a Free Bracer, Wraith Ban and Null Talisman all combined into one, as it gives you 6 to each of your attributes. Also, if you still have tangos, eating a GG Tree will heal you for double the amount a normal tango would as it lasts twice as long. The Keen Optic is another tier 1 item and is pretty good in the early game for roaming and caster type heroes. This one is really simple as it gives you a small boost to your mana regen as well as a small cast range increase. I play a bit of Vengeful Spirit so this one is nice for her swap and stun combo. Alrighty, the Mango Tree is a neat little item which is sort of like a combination of an Observer Ward and uh, well a Mango Tree. This thing, once planted in the ground, will drop 3 mangoes to the ground and then continue to drop a mango per minute as well as give you vision, similar to a ward around itself. It can be chopped down by your enemy though, so a decent strategy has been to plant this in your base for the free mangoes. Next up is the Ocean Heart, which is another reasonable tier 1 item that gives you 5 to each of your attributes. Not only this, but it also gives you bonus health and mana regen while in the river, which is really handy for Roma or ganking heroes that want to make some early plays. Again, if you've played Dota for a while, you'd probably recognise the Poor Man's Shield. This was a great item that you could buy in the early game to block some early harass and help you survive in lane. It blocks 30 damage if you are a melee hero and 20 if you are ranged, as well as a 50% chance to block similar damage from creeps. The shield also grants 8 to your agility, which makes it really nice for agility carry heroes as it boosts your survivability and damage. The Royal Jelly has to be almost everyone's favourite tier 1 item, as once it's found your teammates will all want a slice of it. Not everyone can have it though, as this item has only 2 charges, each which can be consumed to grant you a small but permanent bonus to your health and mana regeneration. This is a great item on any hero really, and usually it is first come first served for whoever manages to get a hold of it. The last tier 1 item in the pool is probably my favourite, especially on support heroes, and that is the Trusty Shovel. Aside from being a true and trustworthy friend, the Trustworthy Shovel gives you 100 bonus health and allows you to dig the ground roughly once per minute, giving you a chance to find a bounty rune, a TP scroll, a healing self, or an enemy kobold. Alright, we've gone past the 15 minute mark now, so tier 2 items are able to drop, and the first one up is the Clumsy Net. This item is well named as it allows you to throw a net to ensnare your enemy for almost 2 seconds, but it also manages to trap yourself as well, holding you both in place for the duration. Aside from the active ability, it also gives you a reasonable boost to your mana regen and 6 to each of your attributes. I find this is a good item on ganking and roaming heroes as long as you're with some teammates. I like to think of the Dragon Scale as a chunk out of Dragon Knight's armor as it gives you a reasonable boost to your health regen and armor. It also applies a small damage over time on enemies you hit with your physical attacks, which can help to prevent them from healing up with healing selves or using their blink daggers for a short period. This is a great item for tanky frontline heroes as it just helps to keep you alive a little bit longer. The Essence Ring is an interesting one as it is quite nice on intelligence heroes with big mana pools, but it can also be good on tanky heroes with large health pools. This item boosts your intelligence and mana regen, but also has an activatable that increases your current and max health by 425 for 15 seconds. It can really help you tank up and survive a bit of burst damage, but just make sure you have enough mana to use it, as it costs quite a lot. I don't know if I really want to mention the next one, as it is probably one of the worst tier 2 items you can get. But anyway, the Grove Bow increases your attack speed, increases your attack range, and applies a debuff on the enemy which reduces their magic resistance. It's... well it's a bit meh, and the range increase only works on ranged heroes. The Imp Claw is actually a pretty good item which is crazy on illusion heroes like PL. This item causes your attacks to deal a small critical strike every 8 seconds which works on your illusions as well. 
Aside from the crit strike, it gives you 24 bonus damage and makes it good on carry heroes to help boost your farm speed and damage in team fights. The Nether Shawl is a really nice item especially for your weaker support heroes or frontline tanks who absorb a lot of magic damage. This one boosts your magic resistance and spell damage quite a lot but reduces your armor by 3. So while it will protect you against magic damage, it won't help against physical damage. So just keep this in mind if you pick it up. Probably the best neutral item a support can get is the Philosopher's Stone. This precious gem gives you a mana boost, reduces your attack damage, but most importantly gives you a nice 70 gold per minute. I love this item when playing support, as it really just helps with your supporting journey and if you hold it for long enough can really help you get some support items much quicker than you might expect. Now the Pupil's Gift is probably one of the stronger tier 2 items as it gives a pretty huge boost to your secondary attributes, meaning if you are a strength hero you will get an intelligence and agility increase and vice versa for the other stats. I love this item as the stats are amazing and the extra health you get as an agility or intelligence hero is really nice early in the game. The Ring of Aquila is another old item that used to be in the game and was an upgrade that combined a Ring of Basilisk and a Wraith Band. It gives a really good boost to agility as well as minor intelligence and strength stats and also a little bit of attack damage too. Aside from this, it has an aura that grants a small boost to nearby allies mana regen and armor. It can be toggled and turned off so that it just affects your nearby heroes and not creeps and this can be useful if you're trying to gank the enemy because sometimes if they check the creeps they'll be able to see the aura affecting the creeps and know that you are nearby. Another strong tier 2 item is the Van Brace. This one is sort of like a supercharged Wraith Band, Bracer or Null Talisman but it can also be toggled to give a higher boost to either your strength, intelligence or agility. This is handy on most heroes as everyone likes bonus stats but I think it is really strong for support heroes in strength mode as the health boost really helps them to survive longer in fights. One of the better neutral items for carry heroes is the Vampire Fangs. This item gives you lifesteal on your physical and magic damage which can help sustain you as you farm the map or in early team fights. Aside from this it also gives bonus vision at night which can be useful to help keep you safe or help if you are in the middle of trying to gank. So that's it for tier 2 items, but tier 3 items are where they start to get a bit more serious. The first one is best on support heroes who rarely attack as it reduces your attack speed but increases your armor quite substantially. It helps protect against the annoying carry hero who keeps jumping on you and might just help you survive a little bit longer. The Enchanted Quiver is another underwhelming ranged item which gives you a passive ability every 6 seconds called Certain Strike. This ability increases your attack range by 400 on ranged heroes and gives you an extra 300 damage and true strike on the attack. It's alright but there are much better items out there at the moment. So the Fairy Fire that you can buy gives you a small amount of damage and a small heal, while the Greater Fairy Fire gives a more decent 35 attack damage and can be consumed to instantly heal 450 health. This is pretty good for carry heroes in the thick of a fight but it only comes with 3 charges so once it's gone, it's gone. A mini orchid you could say, the Mind Breaker silences the enemy on attack once every 20 seconds for a second and a half. The silence is pretty good and can be a real surprise, but this item also gives a good boost to your attack speed and damage, making it quite deadly on ranged heroes like Sniper. I think the Orb of Destruction is probably one of the best tier 3 items that you can get, especially for melee carries as it reduces the enemy's armor by 5 and also provides a move speed slow which is higher for melee heroes. I like to think of this one as sort of like a combination of the effects from a Desolator and an Eye of Skadi and the armor reduction is really nice when combined with other sources of negative armor. If you are enjoying the Vampire Fangs and you see a Paladin Sword drop to the ground then you'll love this item. The Paladin Sword gives you a slightly higher lifesteal percentage but also grants a health regen and lifesteal amplification which helps your survivability even further. The small boost to your attack damage is also nice for carry heroes. Another strong tier 3 item is the Quickening Charm. Best picked up on intelligence caster heroes or other heroes with important cooldowns, the Quickening Charm reduces the cooldown of all spells and items by 13%. This is really nice and stacks multiplicatively with other sources of cooldown reduction. Aside from this, it also gives 9 health regen which is pretty strong for any hero. One of the best tier 3 items though is actually the repair kit. If you hold this, it grants you 20 health regen which is pretty insane, but the active which you can use on buildings is really powerful. 
It heals up the building's health by 40% over 30 seconds, but also grants a bonus 10 armor during that time, making it really difficult for enemies to take down. This can buy valuable time for a dead hero to respawn and save the enemy taking out the barracks or even winning the game. It only has 3 charges though, so use them wisely. The spider legs are also pretty strong and can be really handy for initiators or weaker support heroes to kite heroes that might be trying to kill them. These ones have an active on a pretty short cooldown that boosts your movement speed, allows you to phase through units without being blocked and also free pathing for 3 seconds. Free pathing means you can walk over cliffs, trees or whatever you like, so it can be really useful to help you get in and out of areas quickly. I think this one, the telescope, is one of the best items you can get in tier 3 as it helps your whole team. This item increases the attack range for nearby ranged heroes and cast range for all heroes by 125. It also reduces the scan cooldown by 50% which can be really handy when trying to work out where the enemies might be more often than usual. The Titan Sliver is also really strong in carry heroes or tanky heroes as it gives a percentage based bonus to your attack damage, magic resistance and status resistance. All of these bonuses stack with other sources and can help keep your damage high while reducing the damage you take by a small amount as well. Alright, now we are really starting to get to the powerful items with tier 4 items available. First up is the Flicker. This is an interesting item as it has an activatable that blinks you a small range in a random direction around you and only has a 4 second cooldown. It can be useful to get yourself out of trouble but sometimes it might put you deeper in which can be a pain but the main benefit of using the active is that it dispels debuffs that might be placed on you. Think silences or damage over time abilities, this thing can get rid of them. I find this one handy on support heroes who need to be able to get their spells off and also to confuse enemies that might be trying to burst them down. The Havoc Hammer is best on tanky melee strength heroes that have enemies climbing all over them. If you want some space, slam your Havoc Hammer on the ground and bam the enemies around you will be knocked back a small distance as well as take some damage based on your strength attribute. This thing also boosts your damage and your strength attribute which is nice for the extra health. Another one of my favourites, especially on carry type heroes, is the Illusionist's Cape. This thing is basically a baby manta, as it gives you some strength, some agility, but most importantly allows you to create an illusion once every 30 seconds. It's really nice to help you push out waves and farm safely, but it also boosts your other illusions damage, so if you are an illusion type hero or have a manta style, it can be really useful. Next up, the Magic Lamp is sort of like a free Aeon Disc except that it activates and applies a strong dispel when you get to 20% health or less. The strong dispel can remove a lot of negative debuffs including stuns, so this combined with the 300 heal that you get on top can really help to save your life. This item is best for support type heroes that seem to get focused later in the game by the enemy carries. If you skipped your BKB but you really should have got one, then maybe the Minotaur Horn can help. It has an activated ability that gives you spell immunity for a very short 2 seconds, but it might be just enough to get started with in a fight. The horn also gives you a pretty decent strength boost as well. As a strong late game carry, I love the ninja gear. It applies a single player smoke to yourself, allowing you to run past wards and sentries undetected, which can be handy to help you get to farm or pick off an enemy support that is alone. The ninja gear also gives you a good increase to your agility and movement speed which can help you get places even quicker and the damage bonus on agility heroes really helps. One of the strongest tier 4 items, the prince's knife, hexes the enemy when you attack them on a 12 second cooldown. It also increases your projectile speed for ranged heroes so it can be a real surprise when you get sniped out of nowhere and suddenly you can't do anything and then you're dead. The only downside to this item is that it doesn't give you any other bonus attributes but the Hex is really strong so that makes up for it. Another strong tier 4 item, the Spell Prism is best used on caster heroes with spammable abilities as it reduces your spell and item cooldowns by a decent 20%. Not only this but it also grants you some good bonuses to all of your attributes and some mana regen so you can keep casting away over and over again in fights. Probably the best neutral item for sieging, well at least at tier 4, is the Leveler. This thing, as the name implies, is designed for leveling buildings as it grants bonus damage when you attack buildings. The other benefit to this item is the attack speed bonus which is the same as a consumed moon shard so it can be really strong on heroes with MKBs, crits or other effects that might have a random chance to proc. Again, another amazing spellcaster item, the Timeless Relic is especially good on casters with high damage stuns or other debuffs as it increases both your spell damage and your debuff duration. 
This means that your stuns or silences will hurt more and last longer, so heroes like Shadow Shaman and Lion really benefit from this item. The last of the tier 4 items is an interesting one. The Witless Shaco gives you a huge 1200 health, but at the sacrifice of 400 mana, which is a pretty big hit. I like to think this is good on tanky frontline heroes, but it can actually hurt them quite a lot, as they typically have low mana pools. Thus, this item is best on heroes that have fairly large mana pools and a good deal of mana regen, so that they can easily absorb the loss in mana. Support heroes do well with this one, as long as they still have enough mana in their mana pools to cast their abilities. Okay, now things are actually going to get crazy. Tier 5 items are insane and have the most powerful abilities in the game, and even more so than 95% of the items you can actually buy. First up is the Apex. This thing gives an insane bonus to your primary attribute and is amazing on agility carries or strength carries. For agility heroes, this thing gives you a huge boost to your armor, attack speed and attack damage which helps you withstand enemy physical damage as well as destroy and kill even faster. For strength heroes, it gives a massive health, health regen and damage boost which just helps you tank longer and dish out more damage. An insane item for ranged heroes is the Ballista. This thing sort of turns any ranged hero into sniper as it increases your attack range quite a lot as well as knocks back heroes a small distance and dealing extra damage on every attack. The attack range bonus stacks with other items that grant range bonuses as well, so you can get some insane distance on your attacks. This one is best for ranged carry heroes with high attack speeds. If you thought a level 3 Necronomicon was strong, then think again. The Book of the Dead allows you to summon not one, not two, but... Wait, not three either? Okay, this thing needs a nerf. It summons four level 3 Necronomicon units that are even stronger than normal level 3 units. This is actually insane and the damage from these units is very high, enough to take down many heroes or shred towers and buildings very quickly. The strength and intelligence bonuses are good too and make it handy for heroes with other push type items or auras. So if you need to use your items more than once in a fight, the X Machina, Ma Machina, Machina, or whatever, it can be an amazing item. This one is similar to a refresher orb, except it has a much shorter cooldown and it only refreshes your item cooldowns, not your ability cooldowns. In addition to this, it gives a bonus 20 armor, so it can be handy on frontliners or carry heroes that need to use their BKB twice in a fight. Alright, so we were talking about crazy, but this one is just next level. The Fallen Sky combines a blink and a meteor hammer into one single item. The blink range is extended, so you can cast this from a mile away and then stun all enemies in the AoE for 2 seconds. Insane for initiating, the Fallen Sky can literally win you the game in one crazy initiation. This item also grants high health and mana regen, as well as boosts your strength and intelligence attributes. Force Boots? Well, I'm sure you can guess what these things do. It's basically like Boots of Travel and Force Staff had a baby, and well, now you have Force Boots. You get insane movement speed, and a Force Staff that dispels and pushes you in the direction you are facing. It is one of the best escape items in the game, so heroes that need to get in and out quickly or support heroes that need to kite an enemy carry do well with this one. <laughs> it's funny, I just want to say this is another insane tier 5 item which is true, but honestly, they really all are. The mirror shield is like a free Lincoln Sphere except better. It blocks and reflects most targeted spells to the caster once every 8 seconds, as well as giving decent stats to all of your attributes. This is really strong on pretty much any hero who regularly gets targeted by spells and needs to be able to block them to stay alive at the beginning of a fight. If for some reason you haven't farmed enough, then you need the pirate hat. This one steals an extra 300 gold from the enemy when you kill them, and aside from the extra gold, it also gives a huge 150 bonus attack speed, making it deadly on carry heroes or other heroes with MKBs, Mjolnir, crits or other random chance on attack effects. If you're a caster, then you want the Seer Stone. This thing gives an insane cast range bonus, extra vision, and heaps of mana regen, allowing you to keep casting safely from a distance. This one is really amazing on support heroes who need to be in team fights but at a safe distance. The vision bonus is probably a little underestimated as well, as it can help you see an enemy before they see you, and get a pick off, or dodge a fight you don't want to take. The Stygian Desolator is a throwback to Dota 1, which was the original name of the Desolator. This one is basically a turbocharged desolator as it increases the armor reduction applied to the enemies and also gives you a large damage boost. 
This is a great item for heroes that already have a Deso and just want to do insane minus armor damage or even support heroes to help apply the negative armor when the carries have better tier 5 items already. One of the weirder and crazier tier 5 items is the Woodland Striders. This one gives you a huge movement speed boost, health regen and a crazy active that allows you to create a path of trees behind you for 3 seconds, which all last for 15 seconds. This can be handy when escaping from enemies, but you can also literally wall off entrances to your base if you want to, or even Roshan, and I'm sure you could even do some other creative things with them as well. The lucky last tier 5 item is the Trident. Well actually, this isn't quite an item when you get it, but rather a recipe that can be upgraded into when you combine Asanja, Yasha and Kaya. It is best for heroes that already have some of these items, otherwise you need to spend over 6k to buy it but it is a pretty strong item that gives nice stats, resistances and damage to you. I really like this one on carry heroes who have too much money or that already have one of these items as it opens up a slot in your inventory for something else. Awesome, that's it for neutral items guys. Hopefully it has given you a taste of what each item does and when best to pick them up. I'd love it if you liked the video or you learnt from it, drop the video a like, share it with your friends as well to help them out and also sub to the channel if you want more videos like this one. Just one more video in the series now and it will be covering all the items I haven't talked about so far, making this series a complete item guide for anyone who has watched all of it. Thanks everyone for watching and I hope you've got a lot from this video and the series so far. I'm Defied and Happy Gaming.